Have you ever heard of a photo technique called the light painting? That's where you take a long exposure photo and have a moving source of light. This week we are trying to take some really epic lightsaber pictures using that technique. This technique can be used in so many different ways and you can get some really epic pictures but also ones that look like complete banta poodoo. It's just really a matter of trying a lot of different things and having fun with it. But you do need a couple of things if you actually want to try this. First of all, a camera. A DSLR would be best, but you can actually do this on your phone as well if you have some sort of app that allows for it. And secondly, a tripod or some other way to keep your camera completely still. And lastly, you're going to need some sort of light source. This could be as simple as the flashlight on your phone, but today we are obviously using a lightsaber. <laughs> And when it comes to camera settings, here you have something that can be good to start with, so you'll need to test out what works the best. There's a lot of information online that explains more about the settings and how to adjust them, so we won't spend any more time on that today. I had planned to try this in the evening when it started getting darker, but still not completely dark. Somehow I overlooked the fact that it gets pretty dark pretty fast this time of year already, so when we tried this the first time, it was completely pitch black outside. I had my dad to help me, but this is absolutely something you could do on your own as well. In fact, I did this on my own in the end and we're gonna get that later in this video. The first pictures we took are not completely terrible, I guess. But really, we were just trying everything and hoping something would look good. I didn't realize that we would need a lot more light if we would be able to take the pictures I wanted to take. So we went out on a street with street lights, and here we actually managed to get some pretty interesting stuff. First of all, this picture where my dad was just pinning the saber around in a circle and then stopping it for a second. And honestly, this looks kind of cool. But it's also an example of that you have to really think about everything when you're doing this. Because as you can see, there are two places where you can see the lightsaber blade. And this is because my dad was not spinning the saber as the camera started taking the picture. I noticed this and realized what the problem was, so when we tried this again, the result was much better. I also wanted to try the OBN spin and see what that would look like in a photo like this. I got some pretty interesting pictures out of this too, and I'm sure that someone who is a bit more advanced in their saber spinning would be able to take some really epic pictures. Then my dad had a brilliant idea of what if both of us would just take a saber and run around and see what would happen? This one looks like what someone would see if they took one too many dead sticks. But some of these actually do look kind of interesting. The last thing we did this night was that we tried to get a picture where both of us would do one swipe and then get into like a dual pose. We ended up being a bit see-through, because for some reason we didn't realize that we could have used the timer function on the camera, so that we wouldn't have had to like run into the frame. And honestly, overall it's pretty good to use the timer function in the camera if you don't have a remote, because when taking pictures like this, you really don't want to accidentally move the camera as you're pushing the button to take the picture. After this we got too cold, so we went inside, but I wanted to try this the next day, and hopefully do it a bit earlier in the evening so that it wouldn't be so dark. So that's what we did. The timing kind of failed again and we should have gone out a bit earlier. It became very dark very quickly. Now I had a more clear plan of what kind of pictures I wanted to take. The idea was that you would do a short swipe with the saber and then stay completely still for a moment. It actually worked out pretty nicely. Then the second thing I wanted to do was to get a better dual photo. We tried this many times and this time we actually put the camera on a timer so that we had time to actually get into the shot before the camera started taking a photo. The hardest part by far was to try to stay completely still and only move the saber. Then another problem was that once the sabers hit each other, they would kind of move, so in the pictures you'll see more than just two blades. To fix this I think you could do so that the blades don't actually hit each other, but eventually we did get some pretty good looking photos. They're pretty cool, but also could be better. 
And in these ones you can also see clearly the difference between the green and blue blade. The blue one was set so that it was flickering while the green was just a solid color all the time. Now I think that it would have probably been better to just put the blue on a solid color as well, but when we were taking these pictures I thought it would probably look cool. I don't know, you tell me, does it look cool or just weird? I decided to do a third attempt. This time I did it by myself. I just took my camera and I can control it from my phone. So it's not too difficult to set the focus and everything by myself. Most of the pictures were pretty bad, but there were a couple of actually good ones in there. But I will for sure do this again with lightsabers. It was a lot of fun and there is a lot of potential to create some really epic Star Wars photos using this technique. And maybe also it would be a good idea not to wear sweatpants and a hoodie for this. It doesn't look very Star Warsy. Anyway, if you want to watch some more Star Wars photography, then check out this playlist right here. Otherwise, I will see you again next week.